Hey, what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 16 of the series of tutorial on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look on how to properly structure and organize our callbacks, because in WordPress, we're gonna have a lot of callbacks and we cannot keep writing inline functions like we're doing right now. So if we access our admin.php file and we scroll down here, you will notice that every time we created a page or a sub page, we need a callback. That's how WordPress grabs whatever um, HTML, whatever PHP, whatever scripting you wanna put in the generation of the page and prints it where the page is supposed to be. Right now we're just writing inline functions uh, to print, uh, just to echo a bunch of HTML stuff, just to have a proper visual of what we have. This is not the best thing ever, especially because these callbacks, these pages will have a lot of logic and a lot of PHP inside the callback, so we need to properly require a specific file and organize those files in a, a proper folder. So by using the proper folder structure of our plugin, we already have a template section with an admin.php file and basically that's what we're gonna do. So first, let's update the main page function that right now is just simply printing the alleycat plugin. So here potentially, instead of having this inline function, we wanna call another class or another method that has the require ones or the include ones uh, to include the actual template that we want to use. Just as a test, I'm going to show you why we need to refactor a little bit this section in order to properly use the base controller, because right now something is going on that it's disrupting our ability to use the sort of like global declare variable that we need to use in order to use our template in order to point to the location of our template. So here, instead of having echo allocat plugin, I want to write uh, return and then uh, require once and then I want to write the this plugin path I want to wrap everything inside the double quotes so my variable is going to get escaped automatically and then I'm going to point to the location of my template that is templates and admin.php file so forward slash templates forward slash admin.php if I do this and I save it, I go back in my administration error refresh, I'm gonna get an error where it says that the require once templates admin.php is not present, cannot find it. And you will notice that it's totally missing the actual plugin path that I'm supposed to have. This is happening because um, the actual plugin path variable, it's empty. So we're not initializing. So if you remember in the previous lesson where we're using the base controller, basically with the base controller, we are tapping the declaration that we have in the construct. The problem is that in the admin, we're extending the base controller, but we're also rewriting the construct. So we're completely overriding what is happening in the construct of the base controller and we cannot tap this plugin path. Just to give you an example, just to give you a confirmation, if instead of using the plugin path, we actually use the plugin dear path, everything that we're doing here, and we put it inside this stuff and we concatenate it, we save it, we go back here. Now the Alicat plugin is getting properly required that file and just to give you a confirmation, Alicat plugin, required, let's write the title, let's refresh, there you go, this is the actual template that it's it's working. So the system works, but the variable doesn't work because as I said, we are overriding the construct. So what we have to do, we can simply not use the construct for our administration class and just use the register method or a different method and split the generation of all these variable like these uh, sub pages and uh, the filling up of all these associative arrays into different methods and classes to not touch the construct. So let's do it. First, let's move these things into the register. So let's cut the settings, the declaration settings inside the register, and that's perfect. Then let's use some methods. So first, let's tap set pages method. And here we should use camel cases because it's a method. And here we can say public function set pages. And of course, we can cut this 
and put it inside the set pages. And here we can do the same by duplicating here and set sub pages that it's just one word. And let's duplicate. Let's write again public function set sub pages. No parameters needs to be passed. And let's cut the declaration of the sub pages all the way through. Perfect. And then after this, we can set the register or we can also, well, we can leave the settings at pages all here. So it's not a problem. This is cascading. So we set the pages, set the sub pages, and then we trigger the settings API. So that's perfect. If we save this and we check in our administration area, we refresh. We still have the issue, of course, but all the pages are there and the callbacks are working. So let's fix this template issue now because we remove everything from the construct. We don't actually need to declare an empty construct, so we will avoid to override the construct of the base controller and we can actually finally use the this plugin path. So that's fantastic. Let's go back in our administration area, let's refresh, and now we have Alicat plugin require. Wonderful. So this is kind of an okay solution, but it's really, really ugly. I don't like to have an inline function and a return, a require once, like everything written here. And if I have like multiple indentation of files inside of a folder and a subfolder because I want to keep everything properly organized, this is not the best. I'm going to have like this long callback inline function that is not manageable. What I want instead, I want a class. I want to declare a class that takes care of my admin related callbacks. So all the callbacks trigger by the administration error, in my case, by my settings API. So let's do it super quickly. Inside the API folder, let's create a new folder called callbacks. And inside the callbacks folder, let's create a new file called admin callbacks dot php in pascal case so let's copy this intro of the settings api in the admin callbacks and let's rename a bunch of things so the namespace is inc api backward slash callbacks and the class is as the name of the file admin callbacks and also the admin callbacks extends the base controller and here we need to, of course, include the base controller. So if we add and we copy these, use ink base controller. Fantastic. Let's close the class. Perfect. We don't need to include this inside our init because we don't need to initialize the callback class before the actual necessity of having a callback class. But in order to use it, we're going to initialize inside our admin.php. That is the file that extends the settings API or uses the settings API in order to trigger them and generate pages, subpages, and so on, all the good stuff. So also here, let's use the settings, the admin callbacks. And let's write once again, actually, let me duplicate this because half of that is the same. So forward slash callbacks and then forward slash admin callbacks. That's perfect. So in um, strict PSR2 fashion, we should have our use order by length. So even if here the API are the same, but we should have from the shorter to the longer in this order. So order these in cascading just to have a better organized, like visual organization, whatever. But you can order as you want, like it as makes sense. I like to have this organized. So let's keep it like that. Now we have the admin callbacks. What you can do, we can declare again a public variable call callbacks. And in the register here, we can initialize the same way we're doing with the settings, but we can initialize a new admin callbacks instance. So let's say this callbacks. It's equal to new admin callbacks. Perfect. Now, before going any further, I want to create the method that I want to use to include this admin template. So what I'm going to do, because I'm super lazy, I'm going to basically cut this thing here. And then I'm gonna save uh, here. Let's do hacko just to have a visual representation. It's something different. So let's just print a paragraph 
and let's write something is missing. <laughs> Perfect. So if we go in our administration error, we refresh, we have something is missing. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, let's go in at admin callbacks and let's create a method here, uh, public function called admin dashboard. No parameters needs to be passed. And the only thing that this one does is basically return the required ones with the plugin path the templates and admin PHP location. So this function only returns the admin, doesn't do anything for now, it's kind of like silly, but we're gonna see why it's better this approach than having the inline function callback. So let's save this. Now what we can do inside this callback that it's actually supposed to grab the template admin.php, we can simply pass as WordPress requires an array where the first parameter is the callbacks instance, this callbacks, and the second parameter is the name of the method that we're gonna call. In our case is admin dashboard. Save it, let's go back in our administration page, let's refresh, and there you go. Now we can dynamically including or requiring once the template admin.php from the templates folder. That's perfect. You see how way cleaner and easier to manage this method is. Of course, right now, like you could ask like why this is better than actually writing an inline function and writing the required ones directly inside the inline function. Well, because this is a really simple example and we will not always have this scenario where we just have to require a file. Most likely for our callbacks, we will need to do a bunch of PHP things here. We will need to uh, grab some custom fields. We will need to uh, do a loop to print some settings, to print some fields, some, to print a form, or we will need to do some uh, uh, PHP calculation before actually requiring just a simple template. So having all the callbacks split in a separate class, in separate files that can be managed independently by the class that it's calling those callbacks, it's way better. And because of the structure that we have right now, we can create all the different files, all different classes based on the type of callback. So right now I have the admin callbacks, but if I'm gonna have in my future lessons, I'm gonna have the custom post types and then the widgets and all the other stuff that I wanna create in the plugin, I can create one single file per section to handle those type of callbacks. And I will avoid to have one gigantic bloated files with only line functions and requires and returns and all this kind of shenanigans that gets really hard to manage on the long run. So now that we restructured this file a little bit, before the next lesson, your homework is to actually transform all these inline functions into um, calling an array from the callbacks and uh, calling the method to include the actual template that we're gonna use. So right Right now we have the custom post type manager taxonomy and widget section. Let's create those templates and let's use the callback class to require those templates dynamically like we're doing in our first dashboard admin page. No worries, I'm gonna publish the source code on GitHub, so if you don't know what to do, you can just copy paste the code, but I strongly suggest you to get used to this workflow because we're gonna use it a lot in the future. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel, and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again guys and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding!